John here guys and today we're talking about the new Express LRS 1 watt. I've been rocking the 500 milliwatt version so now we're going to go twice as high. Beta FPV 1 watt Express LRS module. Check this thing out. Can you hear the fan burring right there? Well that's because this thing needs a fan because it can go all the way up to 1000 milliwatts. That's right, 1 watt of power. Now, I feel like pretty much every pilot in FPV today needs an Express LRS module or Radio with Express LRS built in. It's the open source protocol control link for your FPV system that is very cheap, very plentiful, and every new bind to fly that's coming out has an Express LRS option on there. Now, if you've seen any of my Express LRS content for the last several months, I've been using this white version, which is the 500 milliwatt version. Now they have made a number of notable improvements to this newer black version that has dip switches on board. They fixed the USB-C port so you can actually plug it in. It comes with two antennas, this linear one, and it also comes with a white one of these little micro antennas right here for the 2.4 gigahertz control link. It has an upgraded heatsink on the board itself and an upgraded fan, which will allow you to go all the way up to one watt should you need a bit more range. Now, disclaimer guys, both of these are overkill for my needs. I rarely, I don't know if I've ever even cranked it up higher than 250 milliwatts because I'm not using this system for long range. For long range, I'm still pretty much on crossfire, but I really don't long range at all. So almost all of the flying I'm doing these days is either on Express LRS or Ghost for racing. But I find for these micro builds, for just random freestyle, I don't really need to pay $30 for a receiver when you can just as easily get by on one that only costs about 13 bucks. And that's what I'm using for all of these instances. So they even have a new firmware out there that makes the navigation on the joy wheel, the jog wheel, the joystick, a little bit better. There was a lot of complaints on the first one that the first one worked kind of weirdly uh, and it only pushed like one way. I didn't really call this a joystick on the original. It's more like a joy less stick, but if you do apply that up Dated firmware this is supposedly supposed to work the other very cool thing is there is now a flat that's right a completely flat express lrs antenna for the new beta fpv receiver very very tiny and as you can see it's about the same footprint as the little ceramic antenna antenna version but if you kind of lay them like this this thing is totally flat so if you ever had troubles where in a tight build you were kind of knocking this little ceramic antenna off, I know I've done that a couple of times. This is basically the same tiny, tiny footprint, but all the way flat. Now we have had some discussions that the range on this is not very good. So we're gonna test that because supposedly this solves some of this uh, issues, this very new one. Now the range on this is not really that stellar either, but for tiny builds, it's kind of nice. So honestly, if this gives the same amount of range as this, uh, I'm okay with that because this does seem like it's gonna be a lot more durable. You're not gonna have to worry about We're it. We're gonna throw it in this tiny little HD two and a half inch build. This is the massive drone by Callus Machine Works. Right now I have actually have a 900 megahertz ELRS antenna up here, much, much smaller. And then we're not gonna have to zip tie this little antenna because we can just double side tape the whole entire thing right there. So if you do need to put that receiver in between two boards or in a little tiny micro build, sometimes you didn't have enough vertical space for that very, very small, but a little bit tall uh, receiver on the ceramic antenna. Now you have a flatter version. Uh, the initial release of this did have some range issues. That seems to be fixed. I tried it up to about two or 300 yards and it never fail safe on me. Uh, I would use this as the same range as the original ceramic antenna, so not really meant for long or medium range, but it's nice for some of those builds where you're not planning on flying farther than park range anyway to save the maximum amount of weight and now the maximum amount of space. It can fit in any of those. So are you guys on Express LRS? Are you using a uh, radio like the new Radio Master TX16 SB2 that has an internal module 
the internal ones only go up to 250 milliwatt. But if you want the option to be able to go to a higher rating, the 500 milliwatt version is $40 and the one watt version is $50. So if you're buying today, go ahead and go straight to the one watt version. It's gonna get you a little more power, a little more range, a little bit better design. Even on 250 milliwatt, the fan does make a little bit of noise and it's going to draw a little bit more power, especially if you go to those higher power outputs. So be sure that you get a very nice battery pack. I have this 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack that I use for my radio that can power this thing for a very long time. So I'll have a link for this as well as these modules and the new flat antenna receiver below. What are you guys using for Express LRS? It's very nice because you can now choose from a variety of manufacturers from this because it is open source. Then again, they aren't always the highest quality of manufacturing capabilities, uh, but beta FPV and happy model do seem to be improving rapidly. I like the direction that beta FPV is going. I think their modules are a little bit cleaner. I did originally use happy model for more uh, initial release, but now I've been switching to these four modules. I think receivers, they're all pretty much created equal from what I know. Although the beta FPV flat antenna did have a little bit of a fumble, they've already seemed to correct that. So if you can find a new version out there, it should be good to go. Thanks guys.